now I really, really want to do this. So I'm sorry, Greg, I really want to sell, I want to sell the product that I want. Imagine a blueprint, a step-by-step -step guide, a case study where we peel back the curtains and show you what it takes to sell on Amazon. Welcome to the Million Dollar Case Study. Entrepreneurship can be a lonely road. We often talk about all the benefits, being your own boss, controlling your time, controlling your income, the freedom, but there is a downside to this. You know, when things go wrong, all the money isn't coming in, it all comes down to you to fix. There's no one else to ask, and there's often not an obvious answer. You can't get someone else to solve your problem. You have to figure it out at the end of the day. I think a lot of entrepreneurship is problem solving. Learning to adapt to any situation that is thrown your way and to be able to work through it with a level head. But speaking of loneliness, I'm actually excited to say that my friend Kerry's in town. So I've hit her up to help me out with some product research and share her perspective of the process. Kerry's super smart, especially with Amazon, and I'm super excited to have her here. How you doing, Kerry? Good, I'm doing great. That is awesome. Now, do you wanna give us a rundown of what we're gonna be covering today? Sure thing. Today, we're gonna to dive into some actual demonstrations of product research using Jungle Scout, and we're gonna start applying the things that we've talked about. Thousands of people are interested or want to sell on Amazon, yet in reality, only a very small few end up you know, launching a product or following through. In your opinion, why is that? Well, I think it just comes down to fear, fear of the unknown. You know, we're all a little bit intimidated by this process, especially if we don't have friends and family who've been down that path before. A good percentage of people aren't going to be successful if they don't have the proper mindset. And I think mindset is a, a big difference maker because there's going to be tons of obstacles. There's going to be things that just show up just in life and in any business opportunity, there's going to be things that happen. We don't know whether we're going to be successful or whether we're going to fail and we fear failure. We fear losing the money that we invest. We fear losing the time. We fear the embarrassment of not succeeding with this business. It took me years to finally be like, okay, I'm going to do it. And I think back to like my first idea when I was like going to do it and I backed out because I got scared. I wish so bad I did it because like I can see the numbers now and I'm like, you know what I mean? It would have been a great opportunity. And the same thing with my second idea. Every idea I've had, I've kind of been like, I should have jumped on it then. When the terrorists came about or when uh, the coronavirus came or whenever the you know things these things happen, it's how do you persevere and overcome this and have the mindset to, to think around and, and overcome an issue and an obstacle. An Amazon business is really uh, geared towards delayed gratification. So retail arbitrage was very much like whatever I listed today and sent in tomorrow, I would get paid for in a month. But today, if I do product research, I'm probably not gonna see that money for, I'm not gonna see the profits of that work for a year. Like if people expect to make money fast and they don't make money within a certain period, then they give up. But if you set the proper expectations and say, hey, you have to do these things, you have to do some of the hard things, and be willing to spend time doing research and learning PPC and all these other things. So when you hit that obstacle, you're expecting it, right? And you know how to overcome it, as opposed to being surprised and just wanting to give up. You know, there's just a lot of upfront work that I think, you know, some people get overwhelmed with. You know, maybe it's not that they're not willing to do the work, it's just, it, it can be overwhelming with all the um, information out there. You're just so afraid of not figuring it out. But one thing I've learned in life on offline and online is you will always figure it out. You will always like find the means to make something work. And I think a lot of times um, it really just comes down to not having a game plan. And if you don't have a game plan and if you don't have a goal, an end result goal, that will definitely impact the outcome. So the very first thing you wanna do is generate product ideas. It really comes down to a few different ways. One is you can brainstorm ideas for yourself. For instance, you can look around your house for inspiration, and you can also look for ideas while you're out and about trying to spot some different items that could be good opportunities. The second way is to use a tool like Jungle Scout. This is really great because it can be, you know, quite hard to come up with ideas when you're just by yourself. 
So for instance, the product database, which we'll show you today, has over 70 million products cataloged. So there's a huge wealth of ideas there to get you started, which would just be really hard to think of otherwise. The third way you can find ideas is to look at other websites outside of Amazon. For instance, Etsy or Kickstarter, maybe Walmart or Target. You can find good inspiration here, but keep in mind that you'd still want to verify those that, that there's demand for those products on Amazon using Jungle Scout. We'd encourage you to start a list of your own product ideas. I'd aim for at least five to 10 ideas to begin with. Today, we're going to demonstrate the product database. Plus, you get to see behind the scenes as Carrie and I continue product research on our own, looking for the next case study product to launch. So, Carrie, let's dive into the product database yeah. and get started. Let's go ahead and do it. Greg was the one who started the entire kind of industry, really. Not like. Yeah. I mean, oh, I've, I've people were selling Amazon yeah. tools. Yeah, he was. Like, people were selling on Amazon, but nobody really knew about it. Like, there were only a few here and there. And he is the one who started with the Chrome extension and then the product database and started that whole thing. So really anything that they do is really just copying anyway. Yeah. So I was thinking about that. I'm like, that's crazy. You know, like the people who do the best are the ones who are kind of like the trailblazers. Um, what we want to do when we start doing product research is you want to go to log into Jungle Scout and then click on the little magnifying glass. Up underneath that, there's product database is the first thing that comes up. So these filters actually help you narrow down which products would be good opportunities to sell. So we'll go ahead and check the, the market. Okay, we're going to sell in the US, but if you're in the UK or Germany or Spain or France or somewhere else, you can actually choose whatever market that you're going to be selling in and it'll give you results for that market. So I'm going to choose the United States there. And Lenny and I have been talking about um, our pets lately. We really love <laughs> dogs. So the first thing you do is usually choose kind of a category that you want to search in. And I think we should start looking at pet supplies. What do you think? Yeah, that sound like let's a good, do good that. Plan? Now you can choose one of these categories. You can choose all of them. You can choose some of them. It's really up to you. Usually pet supplies are pretty competitive because everyone loves dogs. But along with that, there's a ton of demand. So demand right. is always a really good thing to have. And then maybe just like one note I'll add there is that when you're selecting your categories here, this is where you can think about some of the categories that we mentioned to perhaps stay away from when you're first starting out. So if you remember from last episode, we were talking about things like camera and photo, cell phones and accessories, computers and accessories, electronics. We also mentioned that grocery and gourmet food, you perhaps don't want to sell in there because there's a high liability with those types of products. You don't want anyone to get sick. Clothing, shoes, and jewelry. That's another one that we mentioned that people tend to be a lot more brand loyal in that category. So you might want to stay away from that one. You have the Kindle store there, which of course we're wanting to sell physical products. That's more digital products. Then you have music, movies, and TV. Those are kind of the media categories that we talked about. So that otherwise, I think yeah. all the other categories have a lot of great potential. Yeah. Now the, the product tier, this just basically is the size of the product. So there's standard and there's oversized. So a standard product is anything that can fit inside of a shoe box, according to Amazon anyways. And then anything bigger than that is going to be oversized. So oversized products have a bit higher storage fees and they also have a lower storage limit just because they're bigger items. So I always like to find things that are standard size. Uh, I don't ever like to limit myself, so I'm just going to leave those unchecked because we, maybe we might find something oversized and okay. work with that too. Uh, there's different seller types here. I always leave these unchecked, but there are three types of sellers on Amazon. There's Amazon themselves. So Amazon actually purchases products from big brands and they sell them on Amazon.com. They also have a brand called Amazon Basics that they actually private label things themselves. I'm sure many of you have seen Amazon Basics on Amazon. And then FBA is fulfillment by Amazon. And that basically is, you know, a private label seller, for example, that you source and brand a product and then you actually ship it into the Amazon warehouses. You list it on Amazon and they actually do the fulfillment for you. So you don't have to have a warehouse or anything like that. You could literally work from anywhere in the world and use FBA because they'll do all the fulfillment for you. FBM is a little bit different. It's you list your products on Amazon, but it's fulfilled by a merchant. So that means that it's up to you to fulfill it. So this is good for people who already have a warehouse or a brick and mortar where you can actually ship these products from. So those are the different seller types. Now, these are a bunch of different filters. I like to play around with these and the more creative you get, the better. Usually we always start with the price. OK, so what what price would you say to start with, Lenny? Uh yeah, I generally say like starting with at least $18 as a minimum. The reason being that below that, the profit margins get quite slim. 
then as a maximum price, I personally go like 60 or $70, because above that amount, it, uh, people are less likely to make an impulse purchase on a brand that they don't know, or a, more so like a product that has low reviews, okay? It's like, if you imagine you're selling $150, a $200 product that's got like zero reviews or even like three or eight reviews, people are gonna want to do more research into that product or maybe to look up if you've got a website or they're gonna be a little bit more skeptical about spending that kind of money on a, a brand or a product they don't know. Whereas maybe it could be even up to $100, but essentially the higher you go, the less, conversions you're going to get generally. So that's why I'd keep uh, a maximum of around about 70. The next thing is we really like to look for products that have a, a low competition and a high demand. What's the maximum that you put in for the for the reviews? I yeah. I might be lower. I think we talked about this before. So you Yeah, I I kind of go somewhere around about 80 as a maximum. Okay. 50 to 80 is kind of what I look for. All right. Yeah. So we'll do that. And then I always like to look at the minimum and maximum sales. So this is basically the unit sales per month. So I like to see a product that sells at least 300 sales in a month. So that just shows a good amount of demand. I like that number because that's like roughly 10 sales a day, which is kind of like if you can get 10 sales a day, that's like a pretty healthy sales number. And so this covers three of the, the top criteria that we talked about last episode. Mm -hmm. So we've got high demand, which is represented by the sales number here, the minimum of 300. Then we also have low competition, which is represented by the reviews. So that means that we're looking at listings that have under 80 reviews. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to the price point, we pick that price point to kind of optimize for our profitability. Generally, if it's above that 18-ish dollar mark, you should be able to get a reasonable profit margin. So that's what we're thinking about as we've put in these filters. Yeah. Uh, the next thing I kind of want to do is exclude some keywords. So I think there's gonna be a lot of products that we probably don't want to sell like food items for dogs or treats. Would you agree with that? Maybe I, I don't Yeah. Know. I don't really like the liability of trying to figure out how Definitely. to you know, manufacture these things. So food, treats, um, I think dog leashes are really competitive. I don't really want to sell a dog leash, dog yep. leashes, um, and then dog harness is another one. I usually put the plurals of all of them in there right. too. Yeah, so we're just gonna do a search with just these basic filters to begin with, because we wanna keep it as straightforward as possible. But keep in mind, when you're doing a search at home, you don't necessarily need to exclude keywords. If you're just starting out, you haven't done too much product research before, and you're looking in a variety of categories, I'd encourage you to just keep the, the net quite open. I wouldn't exclude keywords. I'd just be open to lots of ideas. We're a little more familiar with the, the pet supplies category, so we know what a lot of the typical results will be, and so we're just trying to, to sort uh, a little bit more to begin with. But yeah, I'd encourage you to, 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 for your first search, keep it nice and broad. There's one other thing I forgot, and we did talk about this. Yeah. Uh, we kind of wanted to exclude cats. We want to look for dogs. Stuff, <laughs> right, <don't we>? yeah. <laughs> I don't mind cats, but I think we're gonna stick with dogs for now. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so here are the search results. We've got a lot of different results. We've got, you know, bones. I didn't, you know, exclude the plural bones. So that's why that's showing. And there's a little supplement there, but it's, it doesn't mm -hmm. say supplement, so that's why it's showing. So there's a bunch of different products. And if you wanted to view them on Amazon, you can actually click on this item and it'll take you to that tab. I'm just gonna open up a few though as we go and kind of just scroll through and we can take a look at all of those at the same time if that works. Silver Honey Hotspot Wound Care. I don't really wanna do anything topical, so I'm gonna skip yeah, that one. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of those. Um, outdoor Flying Disc for Dogs. Playpen. Uh, grooming Kit. Dog Clippers. Okay. Glow in the Dark Gravel Glow Beads. I wonder why those are in there. Yeah. Is that for fish tanks? I have no idea. That's kind of uh, a good example. We were talking yesterday about products that are sort of weird and interesting. When you're just like sitting at home trying to think about product ideas, that's probably not what you would think about. Yeah. Uh, but that's the kind of product that it's like, could sell really well on Amazon, but it's not a super cool product that everyone would necessarily think about. Yeah, it looks like the monthly revenue showing here for this one is $8,564, mm. 451 monthly sales. 
So what we're kind of doing at the moment is we've got all of this information here that you can see on the screen in terms of like the price, the sales, the amount of competition, all these things that we've talked about previously. But at this stage, all we're doing is we're just gonna be scrolling through these results. We're more so looking at kind of like the image and like the name of the product, just to try to find items that might stand out based off of some of those questions that we posed to you guys uh, before. Like, is this something that's like simple and not breakable? It doesn't have too much liability, which is why we're trying to eliminate like the bones and food products and that kind yeah. of thing. Is it, yeah, gonna be simple to manufacture? Um, all these kinds of things. It's sort of like a combination of those, but at the moment we're just scanning through all these individual listings and just picking out things that look interesting that we can explore more. I think this one looks interesting. All paws, dog paw protector. I love watching those videos so with that? the dogs that were, they put boots on their dogs to protect their paws <laughs> and they walk funny, funny and the, uh, that's what that reminds me of. So that we'll is funny. Like that. And this one looks like a fluffy something, maybe a blanket for dogs. Okay. I like that because it's like fairly simple to make, you would yeah, think. Yeah, pretty simple. Um, okay, so this is like a grooming kit type thing. Like a, It looks like a bundle of some sort, so that might be something to take a look at. Right. Um, Anti-barking devices, nah. Um, let's see if yeah. we can find a few more. We can just take a look at all these different products. Do you see anything else? We've got some water bottles. Uh, okay, in the pet category. Yeah, this is. I think it's the ones that, you know, like there's a something attached to it so that the dog can drink out of oh, it. Oh, that's yeah. cool, yeah. So we've got that. Sometimes you have to make sure those aren't patented. Right. Bird cage, poop bags. It's like everyone needs poop bags, but it's like, I also think like, I don't know how to differentiate that. It sounds like it's probably a very cheap kind of item. I would have yeah. thought unless you have like a lot of rolls in one pack. But. Here is a potty training. Oh, is that some fake grass? Looks like it. Yeah, okay. Look at that cute puppy. So we just cute. threw out ours because it was disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> but if if like if it has demand, I am open to selling it. What is it. this? Bio balls filter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bio balls filter for a, a pond. Yeah. Okay, or interesting. Yeah, that's another good example of kind of like a weird sort of product that you wouldn't necessarily think about, but lots of people have ponds. They need to buy this kind of product. Oh, what's that? Like horse, okay, fly masks, horse fly interesting. Mask. Leg guards, horse stuff. I don't know anything about horses, so that might be a little bit challenging. Yeah, I grew uh, up horse, with horses. I, I like the idea of it. Like, it sounds like something that should be easy to make. However, I noticed that it, it says that there's like size variants. And I personally, I don't like things with too many different sizes. sizes. I prefer, yeah, because then you need to accommodate for lots of different sizes and it's a little bit trickier to manage. All right, I'm gonna start from the beginning. Okay, so what the product database is showing us are individual listings that match our criteria. So we've got high demand, low competition, a good price point. We're seeing listings that match that. However, our next step is that we, we want to analyze kind of the entire niche. And so that's what we're doing here. We're typing in what we think is the main keyword. Now we can see all of the listings because even though this one listing matches our criteria, we don't know that maybe all of the other listings around it could be really competitive. So even though this one uh, listing isn't, maybe all these others are. So you kind of need to get an idea of the, the overall kind of niche or, or market. Okay, so we've got this SUV cargo liner. So I'm just yes. gonna like just duplicate um, this tab. Okay. And then we can search for the main keyword. So what do we think the main keyword would be here? SUV cargo liner? Yeah, let's start with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the extension and the extension right. is the main way that we're actually going to figure all this out. So it basically takes all the data from this search page and puts it kind of in a spreadsheet-ish looking form, but it makes it yeah. easier for you to analyze all kind of in the same spot. It says this is a high demand and a high competition. And the reason why it's saying high competition, if you look at the reviews, there's a lot of reviews here. So it would be a little bit harder to compete. Now, some of them have lower, like this is 136 reviews, 191. Okay, this it's is pretty yeah. competitive. When we're looking at this page, the I, I guess like if we go through step by step, the first thing we can do is look at the opportunity score in the top right corner. The opportunity score is a great 
starting point or a, a guideline. So it's a number out of 10 of how good of an opportunity it is with 10 being a really great opportunity, one being a, a poor opportunity. And it makes it really easy. It tells you exactly why it gives it that score. So it's saying high demand, high competition. And I don't know about you, but I often get the question of like, oh, what sort of opportunity score yeah. should I look at? To give an answer to that, I say at least like seven and up, maybe a six or maybe, yeah, maybe like six and up with a caveat that like, the opportunity score is just a starting point. Yes. It gives you kind of a quick sort of snapshot of like whether it could be a possibility or not. You do want to keep digging deeper. So even if I saw a, a nine or a 10, you want to look into the numbers. Yes, you want to look at the actual numbers like your reviews. Okay, so mm -hmm. the reviews are showing us it's pretty competitive. You also want to see a high demand. You want to see at least 3000 cumulative monthly sales within the top 10 listings. So if you add all these top 10 listings up, you yep. want to see at least 3000 but then another thing you want to make sure to look at is the price point you want to see at least i always look for over 20 dollars. i know you said over 18 so yeah. i always make sure that it's within the price point so if these prices were all like eight dollars and 99 cents or 7.99 something like that really low then even if it might it might still have a good opportunity score because mm. you know the competition is low but the demand is high it still wouldn't be something that i want to sell because the the price point's too low. Remember, again, we talked about the profit margins. Mm. It's like you you get maybe 50 cents per, per item that you sell, and it's just same amount of work for something that you could sell for a higher price point, so. Yeah, so we're looking for the exact, we're looking to validate the exact same things that we've just talked about. So there's demand. Now we just wanna see 3,000, which is just 10 times that. So we wanna see an average of that 300 sales per unit, uh, or per listing on all of the top 10. Again, we're just validating the competition, but instead we're looking at all the top 10 listings and then also again with the price point. So it's the exact same thing, but we're just looking at the entire niche. Alrighty, so because this one, I mean, the price point's good. Definitely. The demand is good, but the competition, so I'm I'm just gonna kind of like pass over this one to see what else we can find for now. Yeah, it's, it's mainly the competition here, I think that rules it out. Yeah, the next one. This is interesting. So these are the Allen Stone Glow in the Dark Gravel. So this must be a, I don't, I don't know if that's a well-known brand, but I'm just gonna duplicate this. Yeah. And I'm gonna look for Glow in the Dark Gravel. Hmm. And like, sometimes it's not apparent exactly what to type in, but a good little tip is you'll notice that Amazon's autofill will kick in and it'll start to suggest search terms for you. So that's a good way to kind of figure out what uh, what it is that you're you're searching for. There's a low demand. There's only 10 sales a month. Right. On this on this page. Let's maybe change the, maybe if I just say glow in the dark gravel. Well, actually let's have a quick look and see what some of these are titled. Like what are people, what are sellers calling them? Glow in the dark pebbles, glow in the dark aquarium fish tank gravel. Uh, I'm not seeing kind of a, a main keyword that sticks out, but yeah, I guess it's like- Aquarium rocks? Maybe aquarium rocks, yeah. Let's try aquarium rocks. So sometimes you might need to do a, a couple of different searches and, and just uh, experiment with some of the keywords in order to kind of find what you think would be the main keyword or one of the main keywords that customers search for to find this particular product. All right, this is a five, so we've got medium demand. As you can see, we've got, this one only has four reviews. Mm. This one has three reviews, this one has two. Okay. In the top 10, it looks like they're pretty well spread out, but then these last ones aren't making many sales at all. So it looks like the majority of the sales are up here and they there is a cumulative amount of at least 3,000. However, this yeah. one is selling the majority. So that's one thing that would be a red flag for mm -hmm. me. Whilst we've mentioned that you wanna see uh, 3,000 sales in those top 10 listings, you wanna see them reasonably well distributed. If you see one or two listings that are sort of taking up the majority of those sales, such as in this example here, then it does indicate that even if you were to get into the top 10 listings that it might be still hard for you to capture sales because for whatever reason, lots of people are going to that one main listing. I want to search yeah. one more thing. Okay. I want to search glow in the dark aquarium rocks. Okay. Okay, glow in the dark aquarium rocks. We'll see if, what happens here. Okay. 
So Opportunity Score is saying three here, but if I look at these reviews, there's definitely some opportunity to get in here. Like this one only has 23 reviews, this one has zero. 63 still isn't that much, and 93 right. um, still not. I mean, and this one was one of the top sellers that we found in that list. And it look, it's it's like listed at number 10. This one is um, has three reviews, and they are selling 105 monthly sales, probably just started. Um, this one down here is selling, um, has 624 reviews. They've, they're selling 1,300 a month. Yeah. So there's good depth here. Um, I'd say the price though is a little concerning because you know if yeah. you're buying rocks, um, I don't know. But like when I look at this, there's definitely a demand for it. Right. Um, the competition's not too bad. Mm, I agree. And then the price point on these ones are really good. Like I really like this. It must be a bigger amount. So it's two point two pounds. Um, these are just a, this is by the piece, but I, I like this. You know, this higher price point twenty four ninety nine. That you know, this one's nineteen ninety nine. So I mean, this is a actually, even though it says a three right here, this to me right. looks actually pretty good. Yeah, I think it could be a possibility. So I think at this stage, this could be a possible contender. Later on in the series, we're going to dive into some sort of additional strategies you can use, such as digging into kind of the keyword research. Because what I'd be interested to find out is doing some experimenting to, to figure out what are customers really searching for when they're buying these products. And that would give us a little bit more insight into whether there's more competitive listings out there or not. But that's sort of a, a, another strategy that we'll talk about at a later point. I think at this point we could say that this is like a maybe and could kind yeah. of go onto our list. I'm gonna add this to our product tracker. So I'm gonna create a new group and I'm gonna call it Glow in the Dark Fish Tank. Yes. Yeah. Oops, not flow. Glow in the dark fish tank pebbles. And I'm going to just add that to that. So the very first thing that we're trying to do is we're trying to generate product ideas. That's what the product database is great for. If you have no idea what to sell, you just need to go here and it will generate all these ideas for you that you mightn't have thought of. Mm -hmm. Once you find potential ideas that you quite like, you've maybe taken a look at their niche on Amazon and you think there's a possibility there, the next step is to add all of those listings to the product tracker, which we'll show you in a little bit. And essentially the product tracker helps you verify the numbers of sales that they're getting. That's the second part of the process so that you can be really confident in the, in the sales numbers before you go ahead and purchase it. So we will dive into the product tracker, but that's what we're doing right now. This is a lightweight micro plush fleece throw blanket. Okay. Um, let's see if there's any characteristics of it that make it better than just a regular blanket. I kind of, I mean, if I'm getting a dog blanket, like I ordered for Henry, I want, I would want like a waterproof one. Right. So I think it's, I don't know what the difference is between this and another blanket. Furniture protection. So we'd want furniture protection because yeah. of, you know, water, waterproof really is the main thing, right? Yeah, waterproof or water should resistant. Should we search for a waterproof dog blanket or waterproof something? Um, I think we should just start with Keep it broad, I think, and we'll start with like pet blanket or dog blanket or something like that. Okay, pet blanket. Yeah, because like when I think about it, you can always make your blanket waterproof or like we can add those improvements that we we want. I'm just kind of getting a, a, a feel for kind of like the overall market. But one thing to keep in mind is that we, we probably will do a search for like waterproof do, uh, pet blanket or dog blanket after this, because sometimes what you might find is that the, the broad niche is very competitive, but you can often find little sub niches within that, such as like waterproof pet blanket out of the whole pet blanket market. Mm -hmm. And that might be less competitive or might be a little bit easier to sell in. So always try to find those little spin off ideas. Um, so is that kind of what the direction we should, we are thinking about going first is to maybe start just continue on the pet thing, maybe come up with a lot of different ideas for pets and then narrow it down. Um, and then once we narrow it down, we can do kind of an analysis on all the different yeah. um, keywords as well as the, uh, you know, the actual sales compared to the keyword search volume. 
Does that sound good? Yeah. Yeah, I <laughs> I am so excited. To- <laughs> no, that's what I like to do too is pet stuff. <laughs> Everybody loves their dogs, so. <laughs> yeah. I feel awesome. guilty though because, you know, the whole thing is to not like get attached to what you want to sell. But, <laughs> but I can see at the same time though, I'm trying to justify this in my mind because you could, you know, I feel like probably a lot of people would maybe just rule out the pet category because it already is mm-hmm. so saturated and so forth, mm-hmm. which it is. But I guess it's like if you look at it under a microscope hard enough, there would be opportunities there that people have overlooked, surely. Totally, totally, totally. <laughs> um, there's a okay. ton of competition here. Yeah. That's thousands of reviews here. Yep. So I think we can just instantly go, yeah, way too much competition. We're going back to these um, aquarium glow in, glow in the dark rocks. And I'm going to pull the extension again because I actually have added those two pebble rocks in our product database search, but I also want to add some more listings in there as well so we can get a really mm-hmm. good overview of the market. So, and right. I'll we'll explain more to everyone what that means. So um, I've added this one and then I'm going to add this one. Yeah, I like to kind of add the, the top 10 to maybe 15 listings all the, the top ones on the, the search results page. So you've seen that you can add listings to the product tracker from a few different places. You can do it directly from the product database and then you can also do it from the extension like Carrie's doing at the moment. Then we'll jump into product tracker and show you what it looks like there. So I've added the first 15. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to the product tracker now. And when you add them from the extension, they're actually gonna be in the ungrouped category tab. So I'll click on the ungrouped and it'll show up all of these. And I'm just going to check off all the ones that we added here. Okay, and then I'm going to go up here and there's this little move folder. You can click on this little folder and if you recall, I created a group glow in the dark fish tank pebbles and I just wanna add them all to that group. So that is where they're all gonna go. All right. So what I'm gonna do is scroll over to the glow in the dark fish tank pebbles, and this is where they all should end up. So usually I like to use the product tracker as a place to hold all of my product ideas, and it Mm -hmm. gives you just a a lot of good information to help you make good decisions. Sometimes it takes about 48 hours for all of this data to load. So if you don't see something right away, that's what's going Mm -hmm. on is it it does sometimes need to have some time, but sometimes it'll show it right away. So it looks like we've got everything in here. um, And if you expand it down, you can see some great information here. You can see the inventory levels, you can see units sold, you can see the the rank and the buy box prices. So you can see all of this great information. My favorite thing to look at though is this top overview. Yeah. I like to take a look at the average daily sales and all of those together are selling an average of 38 sales per day, which is pretty great. The net is about $9, which is pretty pretty good. What would you right. say? Yeah, that's pretty good. So keep in mind, the net amount is when, is after you subtract Amazon's fees. And that's also the amount that will get credited in your account every time you make a sale. So if you sell a product for $20 and Amazon's fee is $5, you only get credited with that $15. So that is what the net is. Uh, also keep in mind that that's where your product cost needs to come out of as well. But and marketing. Yeah, like average any other expenses as well. So uh, you can see the average price point is only $15, which mm. is why I like to go higher on the $20 because it'll give yep. you a little bit more room here. Definitely. Um, in, the, in terms of the net. But this is just a really good thing. This is also a great way to calculate how much inventory you're going to need. Right. So you usually will take the average daily sales and multiply it by about 30 days to see how much you yep. would need. I'm still kind of torn on where to go with this. I think we, it probably will come down to getting some quotes and, yeah, you know, if, if there's a tempting enough profit margin, then it's probably, like, I, I'd say that there's enough pros to, like, maybe move forward with it. But if it comes back and it's and it's like a little bit uh, like a little bit hairy, the the profit margin. If we're not too sure about it, then that along with the competition levels might kill the idea. Yeah. So we've talked about this overview section here, which is referring to all of the listings that are in this group. Now let's take a quick look at the individual listings. 
One thing to keep in mind is that you can view things at different date ranges. You can view the past one month, three months or six months, let's say three months for example. And we'll take a look at what this looks like. We've got one listing opened here, either it was out of stock before this date or it didn't exist or actually it looks like it was just out of stock perhaps. Let's see if there's another example down here. Let's try this one here. And so I really like this view. You can see a number of different pieces of information, but what I really like is just kind of seeing the trend of sales. Because keep in mind, if you would have just checked an estimate of the sales on this particular day, there's like 19 units sold. If you checked on like this day, there's 73 units sold. So if you're trying to make a business decision, you have no idea how much this sells on a regular basis. Whereas if you've got this data for one, three or six months, you can easily see kind of the trend or more so the average. So I can see here that it's gone up, it's gone down, but generally the, the average would be somewhere in the middle here and it actually will tell you. So it gets about 44 daily sales. So I feel really confident that this is accurate because I can see it at its lowest, at its highest, and just you've got a good amount of data to estimate the average. So I kind of like to look at a few listings and just verify that you can see an accurate average daily sales. That's why I really like the, the product tracker. As Kerry mentioned, sometimes you will need to wait 48 hours to collect data because we're actually tracking this in real time. But oftentimes you will have data there already as it's been previously tracked. And just to give you a couple of rules of thumb, it's a good idea to track at least 10 to 15 listings within any given product or niche that you're considering. And you would want at least two to four weeks worth of, of data in there. At the moment, it looks like we, we definitely have that yep. uh, for a, a lot of these listings from yeah. what I can tell. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you, you wanna make sure you've got track data for at least two to four weeks so that you've uh, got a lot of data to look at. So let's recap what we've covered today. We've used the product database to generate ideas. We then searched for those different products on Amazon and then ran the extension in order to analyze the entire niche. We were focused on checking for a high amount of demand or sales, a low amount of competition or reviews, and also a healthy price point in order to give us a good profit. We then added one of our top ideas to the product tracker in order to verify the sales numbers further. Keep in mind that product research takes time. We just showed you a few minutes of looking through results here, but often it'll take hours or days or sometimes even longer to find a good opportunity. That's why you've also seen Lenny and I behind the scenes working through this process and talking through each different idea. We've got a handful of dog ideas at the moment, but we still need to narrow them down. So you do need to be patient with the process. It takes time, but it is the foundation of your business. So it's very important and it's worth the time spent. Don't be discouraged, keep at it. So if you're following along as well, we'd encourage you to follow the same steps. Generate a list of five to 10 product ideas using Jungle Scout or one of the other methods that we mentioned. Analyze those on Amazon using the extension. And if you feel like they're a good possibility, then add the top 10 to 15 listings to the product tracker to assess further. In the next episode, we're gonna show you some more ways to approach product research. Now, are you following along with the case study and launching your own product? Let us know in the comments below. Also, make sure to give us a thumbs up below if you've gotten some value from this episode and subscribe so that you don't miss any future episodes. In the next episode, Kerry returns to share more product research strategies We've now got our category, but the question is, can we find a profitable product in such a competitive category? Tune in next week to find out. I wanted to be a veterinarian until I was like, you oh, really? to blood and stuff. And then you have to also put down dogs and I would hate that. Ah, uh, so. yeah, that is a sucky side of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Work at a doggy daycare, then you just play yeah. with them all day. <laughs> that would be so fun. <laughs> or like Caesar Milan, I would watch his show and I'd be like, this guy lives a life.